All right. Well, we're going to go through uh, unit 6.3. All right, 6.3. Um, and this is talking about um, so here are important ideas of when we're um, talking about the 10% rule and large counts condition. This is when you have a binomial setting, all right, binomial distribution. And we want to know um, if you have one that is not independent, when you take a sample size of n that may be not independent, but yet you're taking from a large population, um, can you still use binomial um, binomial uh, setting values, all right, or the equation and can you use it, um, use the probability for binomials to help you solve um, um, so the sample and, and get some very various probabilities. Well, what we have right here is that yes, you can. This is called the 10% rule, all right? 10% rule. What the 10% rule states is that when you take a size n, all right, size n, if you realize that 10%, which is 0 0.10 of the population, so that's the population, all right, 10% of the population, if your sample Okay, if your sample or your um, sample size of n is less than 10% of that population, the rule is that because it's so small, the difference, okay, um, th that value will be independent. All right, that's why known as the 10% rule. All right, so with small counts of a large population, so that the rule of independence, all right, is what we get there. We know the 10% rule. So 10% of a large population, if you take a sample that is less than that, you know it's going to be independent by the 10% rule. Now, the, also with binomial settling, how do you know if a binomial um, distribution will be normal? Well, that comes to the large count condition, large count condition, in that if you have a model where your n value, all right, your n value, um, and you multiply it by your proportion, okay, so it's your sample size, all right, and you multiply by the proportion, and you realize that that value you get is larger than 10. And also, the n value times the complement of that, which is 1 minus p, all right, is also greater than or equal to 10. Then what we know is that bi that binomial distribution will be normal. It will be normal, all right? So um, a binomial model can be, you can use a normal, normal distribution to model a binomial setting. This is known as the large counts condition. So if you take that count, multiply by the proportion, if it's greater than 10, and also the complement is greater than 10, greater than equal to 10, then you have a normal distribution, normal distribution. Now that, that's kind of cool, and that will help us solve some of these problems. So let's say an example we have this. Um, we use a survey of 100, 500 U.S. teenagers. 500 U.S. teenagers, ages 14 to 18. Subjects were asked a variety of questions about personal finance. One question asked whether teens had a debt card. Suppose that actually 12% of teens ages 14 have debt cards, okay? Let x be the number of teens in a RAM sample of size 500 who have a debt card. Debit card, sorry, debit card. Explain why x can be modeled in binomial distribution even though the sample was selected with, without replacement. Well, first off, um, for a binomial, we have to have a binary. And either it's debit card or no debit card. That is the question. Or no debit. All right, so we got that binary. Uh, we also have independence, okay? It, the key thing is independence here. And since 500, and this is where we're going to use the 10% condition right here, all right? Since 500 is less than, all right, 10% of all U.S. teenagers. I'm pretty sure that would be, right? Because um, if you think about it, there's a lot of U.S. teenagers, and 10% of them is definitely going to be um, greater than 500. So we would say this would be independent, all right, by the 10% rule. Um, we also have a number, a set number that is 500, and we also have the same probability, and that probability um, of doing that is we suppose that is exactly 12%, so our p-value is 0.12. Okay, so that 0.12 of teenagers have that. So use a binomial distribution to estimate the probability of 50, so the probability, all right, that we have 50 or fewer, fewer teens in the same have sample. Okay, so, and due to that, we have to take a um, probability of um, x equaling um, zero, then probability of x equaling, oops, x equaling one, and we would keep on doing that, all right, throughout, um, all the way up to doo -doo -doo -doo, the probability of x equaling 50. 
okay? And then we stop, we're doing all those values under there. Now, we go to our calculator, we can do binomial. Okay, CDF, CDF, that means it's gonna be less than. And we're gonna say our n value is 500. We're gonna take our probability, which we know is 0.12. And we're gonna have our x value. Our x value is gonna be less than or equal to, so we have x equal to 50. All right, right there, it's gonna equal that. We can go to our calculator here, Wrong one. <laughs> we can go to our calculator here, and if we go to second, all right, vars right there, and we want to go down to a binomial CDF, binom CDF. And we're going to punch this in here. So binomial CDF, we're going to put in 500. All right, um, teenagers, we have a probability of 0.12. All right, and then we have x value of 50. And so that's going to find out and add up all the probabilities of every single one of the values. And so we have 0 0.093. All right, so our probability is going to be 0 0.093. Okay, so about um, if you were to take a random sample of 500 teenagers, okay, uh, the probability that 50 or fewer of those 500 teenagers um, would, if you did many, many times, would be about, about 9.3%. So now, justify why approximate by a normal distribution. All right, normal distribution. Knowing this is a binary, a uh, binary, binomial setting, um, we can use normal by using large count condition. All right, large count condition. So large count condition states that if we take 500 and multiply that by 0.12, that's going to be greater than or equal to 10, or or end, I should say. And if we take 500 and we multiply that by point, um, Seven eight. That's right. Eight eight. Eight eight. Eight eight. eight, eight. All right. One, there yep, yep. Eight eight. Um, that's going to be greater than or equal to ten. Okay. And because that is true, all right. Large count condition is true. Therefore, what we know is, um, this is going to be approximately normal. So the distribution. Is approximately. Normal, because a large count condition. All right, and so now the final thing is let's find out. Use a normal distribution to estimate the probability that few, 50 or fewer teens in the sample have debit cards. Okay, so if we did this, all right, probability that 50 or fewer, well, 50 or fewer have debit cards. Well, doing the same thing, we're going to use normal CDF. Okay, so we're going to go right there. All right, but we got to figure out what we have here. So the mean, so in order to do this, we have to figure out our mean. We're going to take um, 500, because that's going to be n times p, which is then 0.12. All right, and if you can't do that, you're going to take 500 times 0.12. That's going to give us 60. We probably that already. 60, we can figure out our standard deviation, which is going to be 500 times 0.12 times 0.88 right there all right and if we go over here we're going to take all right the square root of 500 times 0.12 times 0.88 and we press enter and we have 7.266 7.266 so 7.266 is going to be our standard deviation. All right, awesome sauce. From there, what we can do is we can figure out our, um, so if we have this right here, 60, and we want to figure out 50 or fewer, so 50 is on this side. All right, and we're going to go right there, and we're trying to find out that area, given 60, and given that we have 7.266. A um, bunch of different ways you can find a z-score. If we wanted to, we can go 50 minus 60 divided by 7.266. All right, so if you want to take that, we can find a z score and then use table A to figure that out. All right, um, so if we had 50 minus 60, all right, and then we're going to divide that by 7.266. All right, and we have negative 1.2. That one right there, negative 1.377. All right, negative 1.377. And so that's our z score. And so we could use table A to help us figure it out, but 
I don't have a table A in front of me, so I'm going to use normal CDF. All right, so we use normal CDF with our lower going to be um, probably about, I don't know, you can go negative 100 or something like that. Go our upper, um, it's going to be 50 because that's the highest we can go. We're going to have a mean, um, mean of 60, and we found out our standard deviation right here. Oops, <laughs> my standard deviation is going to be, all right, 7.266. All right, and we can put that into our calculator. So if we go normal, normal CDF. So we're going to go to CDF right there, press enter. All right, we're going to have our lower, which is going to be negative, I don't know what I have, 100. We have our upper, which is going to be, come on, we're going to be here. All right, there we go, 100, and we'll go upper, which will be 50. And we'll mean of 60. And a standard deviation of, all right, 7.2. Six, six. All right, seven point two six six, and you oops, have that, and we should know. All right, we're guessing that it's going to be very similar to what we had before. All right, and we have point point eight four three. So point eight four. Excuse. All right, zero point eight four three. So. 0 0.0843, and if you look up here, 0 0.093, 0 0.093, all right, very, very similar, all right, very similar, maybe just a little bit off game because of rounding and whatnot, but um, using this normal distribution, we can see that we have a very, very similar probability in, in solving that. All right, well, going back, once again, talked about um, how to figure out if we're going to have independence, we use the 10% rule. All right, help us figure out for independence. And if we have a normal distribution, if the binomial can be normal, dis normally distributed, um, we choose a large condition. All right, well, I hope this helps you out, and good luck, and God bless.